Welcome back, my friends, to TFT Hyperroll with Artark. And today we're going to explore one of the new portals, loot subscription, and what you can do with it. This portal leads to some wacky endings because you're going to get things that are going to allow you to get to those reach traits that were pretty unreachable in the first half of the season. But it does end up adding large amounts of RNG into the mix so in some cases the usual builds will not work as well with it you're going to get your first reward right after your first set of augments it's usually a tome of traits i'm looking for insert coin but it's not there so i'm definitely going to take metal heads because that augment in and of itself is just ridiculously strong you're very likely to get into the top four with it if you can just even get to the seven pentakills, especially with the slight Karthus buff that we've seen. In that Tome of Traits is Pentakill, so yeah, we're now one step closer to maybe being able to put together the Pentakill team, and it hurt to roll past that 8-bit quirky, but this isn't gonna be an 8-bit game. And I did a video on specifically how OP this augment is. Not only does it give you some immunity to crowd control, but it's also going to give you a little bit of burst healing every time you get a kill. And with Pentakill, they're getting stronger as they get kills. Now, I definitely want a Pentakill headliner with Pentakill as the trait because I'm hoping somewhere in the back of my head of going to 10 since we already have an emblem and I know there's going to be more prizes coming from the loot subscription as we go forward. Or sometimes it's just your friend at Riot who goes, oh, you know, you're gonna need a spatula. So uh, here's a spatula. Once we combine that with a chain vest, we have another pentakill emblem, which we already have that chain vest on our bench. Now, once upon a time, I thought 10 pentakills was going to be a lock victory if you could reach it. Yeah, I learned better when I actually got it and then lost to two three-star four costs. It is time to look at our second set of augments and nothing exciting in the first group. I always feel like I end up re-rolling everything. Crash test dummies, even though it's been nerfed down to 1.25 seconds, is still really strong. So I'm going to go ahead and take that. Just providing that extra couple of seconds, especially with pentakill, is going to be key. And since one of our key pentakills is an executioner, we're going to go ahead and grab a Kali and turn her into a pentakill as well. So we're going to get executioner as part of this build. Akali will also give us the ability to leap into backlines when there is a backline. In this case, the backline is all frontline because they are a country team and they haven't gotten the Samira yet. But we're still able to get through them with that little bit of burst healing. It is 6-1 and we are already at 7 pentakills, which is a really nice place to be. Those last 3 pentakills, however, are not necessarily that easy to get. It is time for an item choice, and I'm just looking for Karthus items at this point. So, BF Sword, Tear, we get Spear of Sojin, and we also have a Jeweled Gauntlet, and with Executioner, that will give him an even higher crit chance. And because Metalheads gives us CC immunity, this team's Crash Test Dummies really do nothing to us. And even though we don't have any items on any of our champions besides the Emblem, we're winning these matches. It is time for our next loot subscription item. They gave us a Radiant item. We're gonna go ahead and grab the Anima Visage. I debate between putting it on Set, as he's usually a very strong frontliner, but ultimately we're gonna go ahead and go with Mordekaiser. Because of Metalheads, we're getting that burst healing, so to have the additional constant healing, that's gonna be really helpful. It is time for our final augment of this game. You have my Sword Ascension, not really necessary. Martyr isn't bad, so we're going to skip over it for now. Too Big to Fail would be great if we were going Pentakill Bruisers, but we're not. This will give an additional health burst when people die, so that will be pretty useful along with Metalheads and the fact that Pentakill gets stronger as it goes. We're going to go ahead and tank up Mordekaiser just a little bit more and give him a Sunfire Cape so that he can burn the people around him. 
Again, we don't have many items, just Mordekaiser and our emblems, but you can see that we are able to crawl through this very strong team and still secure a victory, but we're searching for these last pentakills. Now I want to take a moment and show you something. When I put Kiana in, because I hadn't gotten the pentakills yet, it converted Akali over to true damage, and that's because she's breakout, so she is going to change based on who you put in. I wanted to keep her as KDA because that will allow her to slash into people's backline. So even though I like Kiana as a champ and she's really good, for this build it wasn't going to work. If you need to switch her back and forth, you just need to switch the champs out. It's time for our last individual item, and given I'm still waiting for Karthus here, we're going to go ahead and grab the needlessly large rod. We picked up a Viego, but that just brings us up to eight. And I probably should have gone ahead and put a Bloodthirster on Akali at this point, since I had everything I needed for Karthus for whenever we find him, but the team had been holding up so well and we hadn't lost, I just wasn't considering it, and even though they have a twisted fate with the Rage Blade, we just tear through them. And we got our Karthus just before the round changed, so we were not able to get him in and get items on him, but we are prepared for the next level when we are going to be able to get Karthus in and we will be at 9 Pentakill. We get our final gift from Loot Subscription, but first we're going to go ahead and itemize Karthus because we have been waiting so long for him. He's been buffed a little bit, at least at the lower levels, and we have everything we need for him now. We can go ahead and grab the Edgelord Emblem because we have two Edgelords as part of this build, Kale and Viego, so this will give us the ability to add an additional Edgelord. We went ahead and made Gnar the additional Edgelord because, well, it just worked. It's all about attack speed at that point. Grabbed a Jeweled Gauntlet for the three-star Kale. But we need Yorick to get to the 10 Pentakill, and also 10 Pentakill has been slightly nerfed, so I'm having flashbacks at this point. Time for an item choice, and I was torn between Infinity Edge and Titan's Resolve for Akali. I decide to go with Titan's Resolve to make her just a little tankier, then we get Yorick. Since we are in danger of dying, I decide to go ahead and go up to the 10 Pentakill, even though it means pulling out a 2-star set. At 10, pentakills take reduced damage, so we shouldn't take as much damage, and that should allow us to be tankier and get through teams quicker, and that carries us into the top four. It is time for our final two item choices, and this game has been throwing emblems at us left and right, this time Sentinel Emblem, which we will go ahead and take. Since Mordekaiser is a Sentinel, we can go ahead and put that on Yorick to just make him a little bit tankier. Hextech Gunblade is an excellent item for Kale, who is gold three stars, so she gets that. First up is a true damage team with a three-star Yone that is also true damage, and they have Crowd Diver as well, but nothing here is really a threat to the 10 Pentakill because they're taking reduced damage, and we're pretty strong at this point. But it is not necessarily smooth sailing, because let me show you what we are about to face. It is a 6-8-bit team with 175,000 damage. They also have 8 health, so we can't knock them out in this next round. We have to get through them as fast as possible because if that pays out, if they get enough damage to go over 200,000, they are going to destroy us in the final match. And yeah, this will just be a repeat of my last 10 pentakills. So everything now is designed to get them down before they can do a lot of damage to us. That ticking clock in the upper left hand corner cannot get to 199999. We have to take them down before that, and as you can see, it's going to be very close, but we just hold them short. And in a final attempt, they went for the gold three star Caitlyn, which had they hit would have made this much more difficult, but that ended up breaking up their entire team on that chance. So the final fight 
really isn't in question, even with the gold three-star very tanky. Garen, it is GG for everyone. Loot subscription is a little wild, but it can lead to some fun games. Hope you enjoyed this video, and as always, have an absolutely, absolutely awesome day.